I'm going to welcome you to our workshop this morning and tell you that we're here to provide not only help, but also a little bit of hope. You see, a lot of people have gone through many different treatments for osteoarthritis of their knee and shoulder without results. If you've tried cortisone injections, anti-inflammatory medications, pain medications, even had surgeries that haven't provided you with relief, you're in the right place this morning because we may still be able to help. You are definitely not alone in this situation. There are tens of millions of Americans that suffer from osteoarthritis every year. The CDC says that in the next 10 years, there's going to be over 72 million Americans that are diagnosed with osteoarthritis of the knee. It's very common. Uh, and unfortunately, despite being very common, there are not very many good treatment options available for it today that actually correct the underlying cause of the disease. You might be asking why I'm presenting to you today as opposed to Dr. Cruz or any other clinicians that administer this treatment model, and the reason is because I, like you, am a patient. Uh, I suffered from osteoarthritis, and I was supposed to have my knee replaced nearly two decades ago. You see, I played high school football. Um, I was pretty decent. I played middle linebacker and split guard on offense, and I was blocking for a kick return my sophomore year uh, when someone from the opposing team got blocked into me, and I fell over them, and they hit my right knee with their helmet, and I tore a couple major ligaments in that knee and had to have it surgically repaired. I actually had to go through a series of surgeries. And while initially the outcome was pretty good and I was able to walk around again and so forth, after a few years, I was unable to use that knee at all anymore. I went and got an MRI and found out that I was bone on bone medially on the inside of my knee. And I was told I was needing a knee replacement, total knee arthroplasty. I was only 20 years old when this happened. I was very um, disconcerned with this information. That wasn't a very good prognosis, especially being as young as I was. You think of osteoarthritis as being something that affects uh, the elderly and people that have been walking on their knees for many, many, many decades, not younger folks, but uh, people that have suffered injuries, especially sports injuries like mine, they can develop it a little bit earlier. Um, so despite being young, uh, I was in the same shoes as many of you here uh, on today's presentation. Lucky for me, I worked in healthcare advertising and one of the doctors that I was working with told me about a medication called Hyalgin, which was one of the first FDA approved visco supplementation drugs. Uh, and recommend that I try it. So while I was waiting for my surgery, I had these injections and I got my range of motion back. I got my strength back. I was able to return to things I hadn't done since before the injury. It was really miraculous. Um, and it got me thinking, if I was told by my orthopedic surgeon and my radiologist that nothing would work for me, but this did, how many more people like me are out there that are being told surgery is the only option when they could do something else, non-surgical and less expensive and far less risky, in fact, not risky at all. Uh, and that's when I convinced that doctor uh, to open a clinic uh, where we started developing a new osteoarthritis treatment protocol called the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol. It's a combination of injections, bracing, and home exercise. Uh, unlike anything that's been done together before, it's our own unique proprietary system that's been developed over the last 17 years. Uh, and we've now trained and certified over 200 clinics in 38 states including Kentucky Indiana Medicine and Dr. Rafael Cruz there locally uh, in Indiana. Dr. Cruz is a, a nationally recognized teacher uh, and clinician. He's extremely experienced in regenerative medicine. In my many years of being in this industry, uh, he probably knows more about stem cells and, and regenerative medicine than anyone else I've ever spoken to at any of the conferences or universities or schools uh, or in the field. Uh, and that's something else he brings to the table beyond these injections of hyaluronic acid and bracing and therapy. So for those truly um, catastrophic cases where you really are bone on bone, maybe you're using a walker or even a wheelchair, uh, he's got some treatment options that could potentially help you as well, even when all other conventional methods may not work. And Dr. Cruz is on the line today and he and his staff will be answering questions at the end of the presentation uh, as you have them. In fact, we've prepared a list of questions that are commonly asked uh, to cover with you all as well. But before we get into that, I want to speak about knee pain and more specifically osteoarthritis. Uh, it's very common. According to the Center for Disease Control, in 2013, over 700,000 knee replacements were performed. Last year, over a million total knee replacements were performed in the United States. It grows at a rate of about 12% a year, uh, these surgeries, and they're very expensive. The average cost of a knee replacement surgery is $42,000. Typical surgical copay is many thousands. The treatment option we're going to discuss with you here today uh, is only a few thousand dollars covered by your insurance. Uh, and if you've got Medicare in a secondary, you'll probably have no out-of-pocket cost. If you've got coinsurance, it may only be a couple hundred bucks. 
Um, so not only is this safer and more effective than surgery, it's also a whole lot less costly uh, as well. Many advantages to the advanced arthritis relief protocol versus what you might have been facing previously. Now, knee pain affects more than 40 million people in the United States every year. It causes hundreds of millions of doctors' visits, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, of medical bills, billions of dollars in lost revenue, um, and it's one of the largest expenditures by Medicare. Uh, of all the conditions uh, that are treated in Medicare, uh, osteoarthritis is the third most costly to treat behind only heart disease and cancer. Osteoarthritis of the knee causes pain, swelling, loss of function and motion. Um, you probably know if you have it. Uh, and it's one of the most common causes of knee pain. In fact, out of all arthritis cases, osteoarthritis is the most common and it's growing rapidly. Over the past 25 years, there's been almost 20 million uh, new osteoarthritis diagnoses. There's expected uh, to be over 20 million more uh, in the next decade. So it is definitely on the rise. And while we see a lot of TV commercials from pharmaceutical companies for products like Embrel, for rheumatoid arthritis, uh, you might think that rheumatoid arthritis is the most common form of arthritis. It's actually not. Osteoarthritis is over 10 times more prevalent uh, than rheumatoid arthritis. It's the most common form of arthritis. It affects about one in three seniors, uh, two in three people that are overweight. Uh, and by 2030, one in five adults in the United States will actually be diagnosed with osteoarthritis. So it's very common. It's also the leading cause of disability uh, in those that are 55 and older. It can also be called wear and tear arthritis. Uh, osteoarthritis is the slow breakdown of the cartilage and the bone and the structures of the joint. Uh, but most people don't realize it's not a mechanical problem. It's actually uh, a glandular problem and a drying problem. Because inside your knee, uh, you've got this capsule full of fluid. And that's actually the first thing to fail before you start losing cartilage uh, and having these other structures wear away that cause pain and loss of function. So why the knee? Well, we've all been using our knees for a long time, ever since we started walking, usually about one or two years old, and it's the largest weight-bearing joint in the body. Um, and the bigger we are, the more likely we are to have problems with our knees, both by weight and size, uh, because we're bearing load over time. And then if you have a previous injury, such as I did, a trauma, it can damage those glands that produce the hyaluronic acid and the synovial fluid and cause you to, to, to develop osteoarthritis sooner. Uh, also, deformity. If you've ever heard the term knock-kneed or bow-legged, uh, where the legs move inward or outward, uh, the clinical terms for that is a varus or valgus deformity. Uh, that uneven load on the joint can cause it to fail much faster. And you'll find when we look at some x-rays during today's presentation of real osteoarthritic knees, that it almost always affects one side of the knee much more than the other. For me, it was the inside, the medial aspect of the knee uh, that went bad first. So your knees can wear out unevenly, and I like to use a lot of automotive analogies. Um, so this will be the first one you'll see today uh, with a tire. And if you've ever had a car where your alignment's been off, you'll notice that your tires wear unevenly. One side of them rubs away faster than the other, and if you don't fix your alignment, it can eventually lead to a blowout and destroy that tire, right? So one of our goals here today uh, is to talk to you about how you can correct that misalignment so that when we rebuild the structures of the joint, get your body to start regenerating that cartilage again, you don't wind up back in the office or back with the same symptoms in a couple of months or a couple of years because we've corrected what was causing the problem in the first place. So that's where our treatment protocol is a lot different than what you might have tried in the past. It's not going after the symptoms, it's going after the root cause. What causes the cartilage to wear away? What causes the joint to fail? And before we get into that specifically, I want to look at what a healthy knee joint looks like. This triangular structure here, this is your patella, your kneecap. And it's supposed to be in the middle of the joint and kind of right in this channel of your femur, your thigh bone. And this shiny white substance you can see on the top of your shin bone, your tibia, and the bottom of your thigh bone, your femur, is called hyaline or articular cartilage. It's like your fingernail. It's made of keratin. So if you want to just touch your fingernail real quick, you have a structure like that covering your bones. That's your last line of defense if the joint starts to break down and wear away to keep the bone from being damaged, to keep the nerve endings and blood vessels that coat the bone from being exposed. The second line of defense is your meniscal cartilage, the soft cartilage that goes between the two bones. 
And your first line of defense is actually the fluid-filled capsule, the synovium, and that synovial fluid that cushions and lubricates the joint and keeps the cartilage from being worn away. As they fail in that order, uh, you can actually expose the nerve endings that are underneath this hyaline cartilage that cover the bone. So if you ever get a sharp shooting pain, if the pain ever goes down your leg into your foot or up your thigh into your buttocks, you probably have an exposed nerve because you've worn through that hyaline cartilage. That's okay if you have those symptoms. We treat people with them all the time successfully. So let's look at why you may have wound up in that situation and why other treatments may not have worked. It all starts with this fluid-filled capsule called the synovium. And inside this membrane, there are little glands called synovocytes that excrete the fluid that fill this joint and make the active ingredient in that fluid, which is called hyaluronic acid. Synovial fluid is often called a non-Newtonian fluid. The reason for that is Newton is the inventor of physics, all the laws of physics, gravity, and so on and so forth. And they call this a non-Newtonian fluid because a regular fluid, if you put pressure on it, displaces. It's why boats float. If you put a boat in a lake, it pushes the water out of the way, the boat floats. If you were to drain that lake of water and fill it with hyaluronic acid and try and place that boat back down in it, that hyaluronic acid would resist the pressure of that boat. The boat would topple over. It wouldn't float. So that's why your synovial fluid's non-Newtonian. You might be thinking, how can a liquid bear weight and be a shock absorber? Well, because it's a very special type of liquid. Uh, think of it like the motor oil in the car and how it keeps the metal from wearing away. It's thick. It's dense. So is your synovial fluid, at least when it's normal and healthy. The problem is when it's not normal and healthy, and when you don't make as much hyaluronic acid as you used to, it can no longer lubricate and cushion that joint and stops acting like a shock absorber. It goes from being thick to being thin, and as that happens, it allows the bones to move closer together, and that wears away the meniscal soft cartilage, eventually the hyaline articular cartilage, and you develop things like osteophytes or bone spurs. Little pieces of the cartilage can break off. If you ever feel your knee like it's catching or latching and then releasing, that's probably you feeling a loose particle getting caught. If it ever makes weird noises when you go up and down stairs or in and out of a car, clicking, cracking, popping, you're probably hearing those bone spurs or your kneecap rub against bone. Those are all signs that you're probably suffering from osteoarthritis and you most likely have an issue with your synovial fluid. So again, looking at a healthy joint, just to recap, We've got this hard hyaline cartilage that keeps the underlying bone, nerves, and blood vessels from being exposed. We've got our soft meniscal cartilage uh, that acts as a physical shock absorber. And then we have our synovial fluid that keeps those cartilages from ever really being needed in the first place because all of our moving joints in our body, our fingers, our toes, our knees, our elbow, they're meant to glide next to each other. Those bones are not meant to touch. Um, so we wanna try and return you to that situation where you're gliding, not touching, not grinding, not wearing away these structures. So let's look at some real x-rays of actual patients to better explain what osteoarthritis looks like, how we can treat it, and what damaged knees look like once they've recovered after this treatment is used. So before we look at bad knees, I want to look at some good knees so that we know what normal looks like. You know, oftentimes the doctor will put your x-ray or MRI up on screen and say it's very bad, but if you don't know what normal looks like, how do you know what bad looks like? So I just want to describe normal anatomy of the knee real quick. That patella should be in the middle. So this is the patella or the kneecap. It should ride in that channel. Uh, if any of you have sliding glass doors at home, you know how easy they are to open and close. But if they ever go off the channel, you can barely move them at all. Uh, so your kneecap's supposed to ride in this channel between uh, the femur bone uh, and never touch it. There should be plenty of space between the bones. They shouldn't be touching. Uh, there should be lots of meniscal cartilage and synovial fluid in there. The bone should be in proper alignment. You should be able to kind of connect the dots, trace the outlines of the bone, and they should be perfectly aligned. These little crests in the middle of your uh, shin bone here, your tibia, is called the tibial crests. And they're supposed to be smooth and round like the Appalachian Mountains, not sharp and pointy like the Rocky Mountains. So this is what a healthy knee looks like from a front-to-back view uh, called an anterior to posterior x-ray. Here's a side view called lateral x-ray, and the main thing we're looking for here is your patella, your kneecap, should not be touching your femur, your thigh bone. Uh, if it is, you have a condition called patella femoral arthritis, which can also benefit from the treatment 
uh, that we're going to discuss today. So that's what normal looks like. Now let's look at osteoarthritic knees and let's start with an early osteoarthritic case. So in these knees, you can see that the kneecap, the patella is just slightly out of alignment, a little bit to the outside of the joint here. And the patella doesn't actually move. There's a really big tendon on top of it called the patella tendon. It's one of the strongest tendons in our body. And if you draw a line straight through the kneecap, you'll notice that it goes straight through the tibia, the shin bone, right? So this is almost like north on a compass. So what moves is your femur bone, your thigh bone. This is actually what comes out of alignment. So in this early osteoarthritic case, we can see that bone just moves slightly to the inside, and there's a little bit of joint space. Most people that are in their mid-30s or older have some mild degenerative changes like this on x-ray. At this point, you probably don't feel any pain or discomfort, um, except maybe every once in a while you feel something funny with your kneecap as it rubs over that femur bone. Uh, other than that, you probably wouldn't even notice your symptoms at this point. Most of you on today's presentation probably have a more advanced form of arthritis called grade two, three, or four on the kelgren lorentz scale. So let's take a look at grade two real quick. You can see those tibial spines, they're no longer smooth and round, they're a little sharp and pointy. We've got more loss of joint space. We've got a little bone spur starting to form. When our joints become unstable, our body tries to restabilize them. And the way the body tries to do that is actually through growing new bone not by regrowing cartilage, not by creating more synovial fluid, its response is grow bone. So if you have an osteophyte uh, growing a bone spur or thickening of your bone, uh, you know you have arthritis because your body is trying to restabilize that joint. Um, not necessarily a good thing. If it succeeds, the joint doesn't work as well. Uh, this happens in the spine too when you have arthritis. You'll also see thickening of the bone. Uh, that's why it looks shiny and white. The more shiny and white something is on an x-ray, the more dense it is. The more gray or black it is, the less dense it is. So here's grade three. By the time you get to grade three, this is where you start to have some real symptoms. This is where you're going to have difficulty with activities like walking, bending, lifting, going up and down stairs, getting in and out of a car, walking the dog. Maybe you can't golf anymore. You can't dance anymore. You can't do the things you used to like to do. You can see the kneecap, the patella, uh, over here in left field, if you will, uh, because this bone has shifted really far to the inside. It's almost bone on bone. Those tibial spines have been destroyed. You can see those bone spurs are a little bit bigger now uh, as you're in this process. At grade three, you're probably going to be using uh, Advil, ibuprofen, something like that on an almost daily basis to deal with the pain and discomfort. Maybe you're using a cane, possibly a walker. Once you get to grade four, you really are bone on bone contact. You can see how huge that osteophyte is. It's that P-shaped looking like object here. Kneecap way over on the side here. Femur bone way outside where it's supposed to be. Usually by grade four OA, uh, it's a walker or a wheelchair unless you're really, really tough uh, and you're managing to fight through all those symptoms. Now, every grade we've reviewed, whether it's minor, moderate, or severe, uh, we have been able to successfully treat with the protocol we're going to discuss today. And I'll be able to show you some pre and post x-rays of real patients that have been treated with that. Before I do, I want to talk a little bit about knee replacements. If any of you have been told you need a knee replacement surgery, um, you've probably been recommended a total knee replacement surgery. There's actually something called a partial knee replacement. You'll notice in all those x-rays I just showed you that one side of the knee was worse. It was the inside in almost every single one of those images. This knee here is the outside. The outside was replaced. A partial knee replacement replaces only the bad part of the knee. And it leaves the good part that's still mostly intact alone. because There's no reason to get rid of it if it's not broken, right? And when a partial knee replacement is performed, that synovial capsule that's full of fluid is left intact. They sew it up when they're done. You still have synovial fluid. You still have a natural lubricant. So if you've had a partial knee replacement before and you still have symptoms and pain, this technique, the advanced arthritis relief protocol we're going to discuss today with the injections and the exercise and the bracing can still work for you because you still have your normal synovium, you still have your normal cartilage in half your knee, you can still be helped. If you haven't yet had knee replacement surgery uh, and you are too gone, too far gone for this uh, procedure to help, talk to your orthopedic surgeon about a partial knee replacement. Uh, it's faster. Uh, easier, less stressful on the body, less costly for you and your insurance company, um, less risky. It keeps your normal structures intact, and it's going to give you a longer life expectancy than if you have a total. Because if you have a total knee replacement where they cut all that out, I'll show you later, 
um, the only thing they can do after that is, a, is another total. So if you do a partial, it still leaves a lot of treatment options available to you. If you're younger, if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, please have that conversation with your orthopedic surgeon if you must. It's much more efficacious than the total in most cases. So now I want to switch gears and talk about the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol that's performed at Kentucky Anna Medicine by Dr. Rafael Cruz and his team. This is designed to fill in the gap between regular treatments and surgery. You might have tried hot and cold treatment. You might have tried exercise or seen a physical therapist or tried to lose weight. You might have used oral medications like ibuprofen, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, or you might even be trying pain medications like uh, hydrocodone. Uh, you may have had steroid injections or other treatments, and those failed to provide relief. Typically, when you go through those steps and you're still in pain and loss of function, you're referred to an orthopedic surgeon where they're going to look at, what else? Surgery. Uh, that's what you went there for. Well, that's where Kentucky Anna Medicine and the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol comes in. Our advanced physical therapy protocols uh, that can be done in office and in the comfort of your own home work on strengthening the ligaments and bringing that knee back into alignment, something that very rarely ever gets addressed when you work with an orthopedist or pain management doctor. The specialized bracing we're going to show you today, very small, very light, but very effective, actually increases the space between your joints and stops those bones from rubbing together. The injections of hyaluronic acid that we use under video guidance to ensure it gets where it needs to go builds that fluid back up, cushions and lubricates the joint, and stops it from wearing down any further, giving you a chance to regenerate and regrow cartilage. And if your knee's been very bad and you've lost a lot of cartilage, we can help your body regenerate it faster by harvesting the growth factors from your blood with platelet-rich plasma or transplanting stem cells to help your body grow new cartilage faster than it can on its own. Some of those treatments are even covered by your insurance, and we'll get into that in a little bit. On the regenerative medicine side, all of the injections, bracing, and therapy are covered by all major insurances, including Medicare. Uh, and if you have Medicare in a secondary, you likely have little to no out-of-pocket cost. So let's talk about how this is superior and a better option than the treatments you may have tried and failed in the past. Uh, pain medications such as hydrocodone and Vicodin can be habit-forming, they can cause problems with the liver and kidney. Short-term, it can cause problems with your, uh, your bowels and the ability to go to the bathroom and cause constipation. And we've all seen now on 60 Minutes and uh, the news, the opiate epidemic that we have in our United States here and how most of those people that are using heroin and illegal drugs started out with a legal prescription for pain uh, for arthritis, for an injury, for a surgery. Um, so we know that these medications are not only risky short-term, but they're really risky long-term. They might even change the way that the brain functions permanently. So we definitely don't want to do painkillers. How about that over-the-counter medication like Tylenol and Advil, uh, ibuprofen and acetaminophen? Uh, short-term, these are great. Uh, you know, Tylenol is so safe, we give it to babies when they have fevers, right? I have a little girl. She's eight, almost nine years old. Uh, when she had her first fever, uh, you know, as a new parent, first child, you know, it's the end of the world. You're freaking out. You go to the doctor uh, and they say, use Tylenol. And then four hours later, use Motrin and go back and forth. So you don't give the baby too much of either of the medications. And being as nervous as I was, I actually peeled the label back on the corner where it says you can get the rest of the instructions. And I read the whole thing. And I saw something really surprising there, uh, which you may or not be aware of. You're only supposed to use those medications for seven days or less. It says do not use for more than seven consecutive days. Well, if you've got osteoarthritis, you've probably been using ibuprofen and acetaminophen and so forth more than seven consecutive days, right? And that's where the risk factors come in, where the kidney and liver damage and so on and so forth becomes an issue. And did you know that Tylenol actually is responsible for the death of over 300,000 people annually from liver and kidney failure? You think that Tylenol is this really benign, safe thing. Um, and it is when you use just a little, but when you use a lot for a long period of time, it can be quite dangerous. That's not what it was designed for. So if you don't want to use prescription pain medications or over-the-counter non-steroidals, looks like you need surgery, right? Not anymore. Uh, that's where we come in with this better option. And it's a better option because knee replacement surgery has its flaws. It's not a guarantee. Uh, very rarely are you told this, but you can actually get worse after knee replacement surgery, right? And one of the reasons why knee replacements may not be the best approach is because they only make joint replacements in small, medium, large. 
And, you know, if you're buying shoes or clothes, you know, we have many different sizes. We're extra, extra small, extra, extra large and everything in between, right? Um, so you get the closest size that fits your joint. Not exactly a perfect solution. Uh, it's a rigorous procedure. It's a long recovery. You usually have to do six months to a year of physical therapy afterwards. If you haven't yet had surgery and you're considering surgery, I recommend you go to YouTube, type in knee replacement surgery. There are orthopedic surgeons that have put videos of the surgery up there for people to see. Uh, you know, saying like, oh, it only takes 30 minutes. It's not a big deal. And you'll see them with the saws and the hammers and uh, really going to town on these joints. Maybe it's not a big deal for them, but it looks pretty darn traumatic to me. Uh, and then it doesn't last forever. Uh, most people don't realize this. A total knee replacement on average lasts for about 8 to 12 years, depending on your physical function and activity. So if you're under 80 years old, I would say, you really want to try and delay or avoid that knee replacement surgery because you're probably going to outlive the hardware and have to have a revision surgery. And initial knee replacement surgeries are not that bad. Most people are satisfied with them. But when you go into a revision, the results get much, much worse. And I like to break knee replacement surgery results up into really simple quarters. Uh, basically, half the people are glad they got their knee replaced, half aren't. Uh, with a quarter of them, they had some improvement. With a quarter of them, the pain's completely gone. Uh, but there are some people where it doesn't make any difference and the pain stays the same. And there's even some people where the pain gets worse. So we want to leave surgery as our last option. And if we do have to do surgery, please talk to your doctor about the partial knee replacement. It is a much easier way uh, to go about it with potentially better results. This is what a total knee replacement looks like if you've never seen one before. So they cut off the top of your tibia, your shin bone. They put this metal plate in there and it's screwed into the bone and there's a little post that goes into your bone marrow. Uh, on the top side, uh, they put a cap over your femur. They grind it down, put this usually a plastic cap over it uh, or nickel cap. And uh, this mechanical structure now replaces your normal anatomy. One of the big problems with these artificial knees, though, is that fluid-filled capsule, that's your first line of defense, your cushioning and lubricating agent, that's no longer there. That gets removed from your body and discarded when they do this total knee replacement surgery. So that's why when these fail, the only thing that can work is to go in, remove it, and surgically replace it. And then they're cutting away more bone and more bone, and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Also, when you go under uh, anesthesia for these procedures, there's always that rare risk of not waking back up. But what most people don't realize is there's a secondary disease associated with anesthesia called postoperative cognitive dysfunction. And it gives you symptoms like Alzheimer's um, <clears throat> or dementia, where you can be forgetful, you can be foggy. Um, you can have a hard time remembering things and doing normal activities. And it can take six months or longer for your body to fully metabolize all that anesthesia and get out in some cases. Uh, a lot of people are misdiagnosed as actually having um, diseases of the brain after anesthesia. So that's a lesser known side effect of anesthesia. But we're not here to scare you or talk about all the bad things that don't work. Uh, we're here to explain why we have a better solution and how you can avoid these drug surgeries, complications, and expense. So to demonstrate how this works, if you've got an old sponge at home, a traditional sponge, the nice square sponge, not the fancy ones that go on a wand with soap or the scrub daddy from TV or Bed Bath & Beyond, nice original uh, sponge. Uh, after today's presentation, I'd like you to go to the sink, get it nice and soaking wet, and try and rip it in half. It's going to be very frustrating because you're not going to be able to tear it. You won't be able to rip that sponge in half. When the sponge is moist and full of fluid, it's very elastic very easy to rebound to its normal shape. Now let that sponge sit next to your sink for two or three days to where it's still moist but no longer soaking wet. Now try and rip it. You'll probably be able to tear it, maybe cause a little bit of damage uh, because it's no longer as elastic and it loses that rubbery rebounding ability because it's not as damp as it used to be. Now leave it for two or three more days until it gets fully dry. You won't even have to try to rip it. You can just put it in your hand close your fist and it'll probably crumble up into a million pieces. This is a really good analogy for the cartilage in your knee, your shoulder, and all of your joints. When it is well hydrated, it is extremely strong, very difficult to damage your cartilage in that situation. But as it becomes less moist and there's less synovial fluid, the cartilage becomes more brittle and it wears away faster and it tears easier and that's what osteoarthritis is. It starts with this loss of fluid, and that's what leads to the damage to your cartilage. If you don't address the problem with the fluid, you cannot 
correct and repair the cartilage. So we want to take this synovial fluid that has changed from very thick and oil-like to very watery and thin, and that has allowed the joint to collapse. Now, wouldn't it make sense to fill that capsule back up with a nice thick fluid? Again, this isn't a trick question because that's exactly what we do. And these injections also help to train your body to create that normal joint fluid on its own. So when I first received my injections almost two decades ago, there was only three medications on the marketplace for visco supplementation. Now there's 17. Technology has come a long way. The original medications were made from the comb of the rooster, that red crest that they have, was dissolved, sterilized, and concentrated. Then they came out with synthetic products like Synvis that were made from vinyl sulfone and latex and formaldehyde. They chemically made something that was similar to our, our fluid, and, and that had some side effects associated with it. Uh, nowadays, they have a process where they use a bacterial culture uh, to excrete hyaluronic acid, all natural, no side effects, no allergic interactions, so safe, it's actually labeled safe as saline placebo by the Food and Drug Administration. So we work with one of those joint lubricants uh, inside our facilities, and I want to explain briefly how it compares to cortisone and why it's so different. Cortisone injections are an anti-inflammatory. They're like those oral medications you take, but we're injecting them locally, right? And how does cortisone work? It dries things up. If you've ever had a sinus infection or a respiratory infection, you've probably been prescribed prednisone or some type of a tablet to take. That's a corticosteroid. And you'll notice that within a day or two of taking it, your nose is no longer runny. You no longer have all this extra mucus, right? Because it dries it out. So if you've got a drying problem in your joint, you have less fluid than you're supposed to, and you put cortisone in there, isn't that just going to dry it out further and make it even worse? And the answer is yes, it will. But if you've got inflammation, swelling, it makes that feel better short term, but long term actually causes much more problems than benefit. Uh, cortisone, if you've ever had the injection, maybe it's stung or burns because it's very acidic. It eats away. Uh, your bone actually can create up to 8% loss of bone in only 120 days. And Corticosteroids, uh, the full name of the medication is actually glucocorticosteroid because it's derived from glucose. There's a sweet potato that grows in South America that is actually processed to make cortisone. So if you've got diabetes and you've got a cortisone injection, as your body breaks it down, turns into sugar, uh, you can have some serious side effects. And if you use cortisone uh, enough, it actually causes problems in your eyes because if you've ever had that uh, camera image taken of your eye when you go to the optometrist, You've seen all those little red crisscrossy lines, almost looks like a highway of red roads, right? Those are all little blood vessels and capillaries in your eyes. So your eyes are very sensitive to changes in your blood. And that's why using cortisone for an extended period of time can cause cataracts, actually. Um, so there's a lot of risk factors associated with cortisone long-term that you might not think about. But the main problem uh, is that why it might help with the pain short-term, it actually speeds up the breakdown of the joint. So we want to avoid using cortisone. It's something that's almost never used in our facilities unless you come in your knees all swollen uh, where we have to drain the fluid and so on and so forth. Then it's appropriate to use, but only short term. In fact, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but the FDA says you're only supposed to use cortisone three times in your lifetime in a given area because of these risk factors. So there's some food for thought. So better idea, let's change the joint oil. The clinical term for this is called visco supplementation. And we use a medication uh, most commonly called Genvisc 850. Uh, this is an all-natural product, no side effects, no drug interactions. And I just want to play a brief video that's going to show the procedure taking place so you can see how we do it with video guidance, with the application of bracing therapy, and how this may be different than what you've tried in the past. Even if you've had other injections of visco supplementation previously, this approach may still work for you. Osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease, is the most common type of arthritis. With osteoarthritis, the surface layer of the cartilage breaks down and wears away. This allows the bones under the cartilage to rub together, resulting in pain, swelling, and loss of motion in the joint. Although in some people it progresses quickly, in most individuals, joint damage develops gradually over years. Visco supplementation therapy is a non-surgical outpatient procedure by which a pain relief medication 
medication called Suparx is injected into the knee joint. This medication mimics the body's synovial fluid of the knee that lubricates the cartilage. Suparx will help the knee to move smoothly, reducing or relieving the pain of osteoarthritis. In preparation for the injection, the physician sterilizes the knee and administers a local anesthetic. The physician positions an imaging device called a fluoroscope over the knee. The fluoroscope will display a moving x-ray of the inside of the knee that will ensure the suit parts reaches the joint space. The physician carefully guides a needle to the joint space. The physician confirms the placement into the knee joint with an injection of contrast dye. The contrast dye is clearly visible on the fluoroscope image. If the dye pools in the soft tissue at the front of the knee, the physician will adjust the depth and angle of needle placement until the joint capsule of the knee is reached. When the contrast dye flows through the joint capsule, the physician knows they are ready to inject the suparts. While leaving the needle in position, the physician removes the contrast dye syringe and replaces it with a syringe filled with suparts. The physician injects the suparts into the joint space within the knee. The suparts will bond with the synovial fluid inside the joint, cushioning and lubricating the joint. When the injection is complete, the physician removes the needle and bandages the knee. Ice is then applied to reduce swelling. Suparts is administered in a series of five injections one week apart. Pain relief can be immediate and has been shown to last for six months or longer. In addition to the Suparts injections, knee bracing and physical therapy are utilized to enhance the effects of the medication. Now, I made that video a couple of years ago, so when you hear the, um, the medication Suparts, we used to use that regularly before Genvisc 50 was created. But it's the same process, and the reason I show that video is primarily because of the contrast dye. Using this video x-ray and this dye to confirm we're inside the joint space is probably the most important thing we do because these medications are all very thick. They're gel-like. If we're not inside that capsule, they cannot work. So that's the most important part. Then secondarily, once we get into the capsule with this medication, we want it to interact with the glands, the synovocytes, and retrain the body to start producing that synovial fluid again. Uh, the right way it was supposed to, the right volume it was supposed to. And that's why we do a series of five injections. If any of you have had injections like this previously, maybe you had Synvisc 1, Gel 1, or Monovisc, these single injections where they do one big dose all at once. And that's great for short-term relief, uh, but it's the difference between changing the oil in your car or making your car be able to create its own new oil all the time and never have to get an oil change ever again. When we do these injections once a week for five weeks, it retrains that joint uh, to produce its own fluid, so you probably won't have to repeat this. Uh, now, if your condition's very bad and you do have to repeat it, most insurances, including Medicare, will actually cover this twice a year. Some, such as Aetna, will actually cover it up to every 90 days. The other reason we use this Genvisc 50 product is because it had a two-year research study done on it called Longitudinal, where they follow up with these patients for a long period of time, and over 85% of the patients still had a positive outcome two years later after their injections. That's even better than the follow-up outcomes with knee replacement. So not only is this less costly, less risky, but it's even possibly more effective than the surgical alternative. And that's because it's not treating the symptoms, it's addressing the root cause of your problem. It's cushioning the joint, it's lubricating the joint, but most importantly, it's bonding with those synovocytes, those glands to produce normal hyaluronic acid and joint fluid again so that you don't have to repeat this, you don't have to undergo surgery, you get to correct the root cause of your symptoms. Now, one of the other reasons we use this product, the 850 in it stands for its weight, uh, 850 Daltons. It's very effective at bonding to thin synovial fluid and building it up to be thick again. Um, so this helps you to create that cushioning, that lubricating. Within two to three weeks, most people experience significant improvements. It does not take a long time for the positive change to start, but that positive change keeps going for a long time. Uh, and that's why in this follow-up study at 40 months, uh, the patients still had unbelievably high positive outcomes uh, compared to the control group that wasn't getting treatments uh, or those. And there were no side effects or drug interactions uh, reported whatsoever in that study. More good news, uh, visco supplementation, it, you'll notice it says supplementation uh, in the name of the procedure, it's actually not a drug. These substances are all natural. And that's why even if you're on heart medication or other medication, you don't have to worry about this interacting with it. 
uh, and hurting you. It cannot make it worse, can only make it better. It's extremely safe, so safe, hyaluronic acid is actually used as a placebo. In diabetic clinical research, we're using a sugar pill or a sugar water injection could actually be dangerous to the patients. Uh, it is FDA cleared uh, and only administered by medical professionals such as Dr. Cruz from Kentucky and Integrative Medicine here. So what's the catch? I want to speak briefly to those of you that may have had these type of injections in the past and it didn't work uh, because we always get those folks. Uh, and I want to explain the difference in how we utilize this medication and what we do along with the medication where even if you had an injection like this in the past, uh, it may work. Uh, first and foremost is the type of medications we use. And even more important, the type of medication is the amount of times it's administered. I cannot stress enough that if you repeat the injections five times as we do, uh, or even three times, it's going to be more effective than doing it only once uh, because it can retrain those synovocytes. How it's injected, were you able to see it taking place? Did the doctor use an ultrasound or a fluoroscope to see inside your knee as they were doing that procedure? And I cannot understate how important that is because according to the American Journal of Sports Medicine, over 21% of injections into the knee actually fail to reach the inside of that capsule. That same study in the shoulder found over 55% failed to reach the joint space. So what happens if you're sick and the doctor prescribes an antibiotic to you and you start feeling better and you don't finish it? Sometimes the sickness comes back, right? Because you didn't get a full dose. So if these injections miss 21% of the time in the knee, 55% of the time in the shoulder, you probably didn't get a full dose. So maybe it didn't work because you just never had the full dose of medication in the first place. And that's why we never guess. We use these video fluoroscope devices that allow us to see inside the knee in real time. Uh, it's like a moving x-ray and the needle can be seen on approach. We use contrast out of confirmed placement. And one thing we can guarantee is that the medication will always get where it's supposed to go. Can't guarantee it'll work for everyone, although it does work for most, the overwhelming majority. Um, but we can definitely guarantee the medication is going to get where it needs to go. So even if you're very uh, advanced arthritis uh, and surgery really does wind up being your only option, you'll be able to pursue with the peace of mind knowing you tried everything and gave it your best shot. Now this is what an arthrogram looks like. This is the injection of contrast dye. So on this image, this line you see right here, that's the needle. We can actually see the needle as it approaches the joint. And this black um, item that you see here that kind of looks like the Batman logo, which is why I picked this one. I think it's a little cute. That's the contrast dye. You can see it flowing throughout the capsule. You can actually see that dye moving here to the back of the knee a little bit. When that dye flows throughout the capsule, that's how we know we're in the right spot to inject the medication. If it pools and just makes a little circular blurb uh, where we're in the fat pad behind the patella or some other soft tissue structure, we know we have to adjust the depth and angle of needle placement until we get that free flow of dye and we can put the medication where it needs to go. So this is the big trick to making sure that these injections are most effective. And real-time video fluoroscopy is used by Dr. Cruz and his team uh, at Kentucky and Integrative Medicine to ensure these medications always get where they need to go. And in reality, our program approach is simple. We read the clinical research, we followed what worked, we do what we feel is right, uh, we offer a risk-free consultation to look at your health history and what you've tried before, and we only accept those who we truly believe we can help. We don't waste your time uh, doing something if we know it's not going to work. And more than three-quarters of the patients that go through this protocol have a significant reduction of pain and improvement of function in just a single round of injections. Uh, and that three-pronged approach is the combination of those video-guided injections of the Genvisc 850, the hyaluronic acid, the specialized physical therapy in office done while you're there for your injection visit and a little home exercise device you'll use at home 10 minutes a day to help strengthen those ligaments and put the knee back into alignment. And then this special unloading knee brace and it's very light, very comfortable lined in memory foam. You'll wear that uh, typically for about six to eight weeks while you're going through the injections and just briefly thereafter. And it's going to temporarily hold the joint space open so that the medication we're injecting can actually work. This is an x-ray before and after of the knee brace being applied. Here you can see where the knee is bone on bone. And on this side, you can see where there's joint space again. These images are only a few minutes apart. So the knee brace acts like a scaffolding to temporarily hold the joint open while we rebuild the fluid and allow an opportunity for your body to regrow the cartilage that's been destroyed. 
It's just like if you ever had braces for your teeth. It moves the bones back into alignment. You don't keep the braces for the rest of your life. Once it's in alignment, they're taken off. This knee brace is very much the same way. It's a temporary tool to help your knee heal better. And there's clinical research published that shows when you brace these joints after the injections, it's much more effective than just doing the injections or just doing bracing by itself. The same thing is true with rehabilitation. When you do it at the same time as the injections, it works a lot better than when you do it just before or after. And the reason for that specifically is we're trying to stimulate these glands and they're only stimulated by two things, the presence of hyaluronic acid and weight bearing activity. So the more you walk, the more you exercise, the more those glands will produce the fluid. So getting you back to doing some motion in the joint, and we're not talking about lunges and leg presses and stuff that hurts, really simple moving your knee through range of motion without weights at first uh, and kind of building up from there, the type of therapy that you're going to do at Kentuckiana Medicine and at your home, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to make it worse. A lot of times people go to a physical therapist and, and it makes them sore, it makes it painful, it makes it worse. That's not the type of therapy we do. It's much, much easier and probably different than anything you've tried in the past. Now, the last thing I want to show you x-ray-wise is a real patient. Uh, this was an 85-year-old female patient that came to one of our facilities in southern New Jersey in 2011. She was not a candidate for surgery because she had a titanium rod installed previously uh, to set her broken femur. She was in a wheelchair, she couldn't stand, and she was in a nursing home. This was her x-ray the first day she came in. This is what bone-on-bone -bone really looks like. The term bone-on-bone -bone often gets overused. Very few people are actually bone-on-bone. -bone. Uh, this is a real case. You can see the really large osteophytes here beginning to fuse. She could barely even bend that knee. This x-ray is the same patient just over two years later, and you can see there's joint space where previously none existed, and the x-ray is much more white and shiny, right? That's density of bone. Her osteoporosis corrected. You can see how dense her muscle is now. She lost over 60 pounds because she was able to walk again. She was able to cook her own meals again. She was able to leave the nursing home and no longer needed a wheelchair or a walker or even a cane uh, in just two short years. I'm sure this extended her life uh, quite a bit uh, as a result of that. Uh, and if we can get this type of a result with a case of this bad, you know, I want you to compare your x-rays to these uh, when you have them done, if you don't have them already, uh, it's probably going to work for you too. So that's why I show this. Uh, it can help really bad cases. I was bone on bone uh, and it worked for me. So the next step is this no cost consultation. And because of COVID-19 and all the social distancing we're all doing right now, uh, we actually want to start by offering you a phone consultation to go over what you might have tried in the past, what your symptoms are, and to determine whether or not it's worth you coming into the office uh, to take a further look. Now, if you do come into the office, we have the ability to do your x-rays if you haven't had them recently, uh, and really give you some specifics on how this may work for you. Also, during that phone consultation, we can take your insurance information, verify your benefits, make sure your insurance is going to cover this. If you've got any copay or co-insurance, we'll let you know what that is before you come in. Um, so that verification of benefits is also complimentary. I encourage you to take advantage of this risk-free, no-cost consultation if you want to reduce your pain, if you want to try and get back to some of the activities you couldn't do, like dancing or golfing, if you want to be able to go up and down your stairs without pain, get in and out of your car without pain, if you want to get rid of that very annoying stiffness that you get if you don't move your knees for your spare time, where it feels like you have to warm them up before you can use them again. Uh, you know, I had to deal with that once. Very frustrating. Uh, this can help you return to those activities and get rid of all those negative symptoms you might be experiencing. And the last thing I want to touch on briefly is regenerative medicine. You'll notice the name of the clinic is Kentuckiana uh, Integrative Medicine, and they offer regenerative medicine as one of their techniques there. And maybe you've looked at stem cells and some of these other regenerative techniques in the past um, and seen how expensive they were and not covered by insurance and so on and so forth. I want to show you something different here. There is more than one type of regenerative medicine. We can harvest the growth factors from your blood to do platelet-rich plasma. We can use stem cells from your body or from tissue banks. Uh, we can use these things called exosomes, excretions from stem cells. There's so many different tools available in regenerative medicine right now, and some of them are very inexpensive, and some of them are even covered by insurance. But I want to show you what it can do when the primary treatment doesn't work. And I'm just zooming in here. This is a real patient, an 88-year-old man uh, that was treated in one of our facilities in western Pennsylvania. On the left-hand side, you can see he's almost bone-on-bone -bone there. 
The injections of hyaluronic acid did not work for him. He had five injections of hyalgin. On that right-hand side, you can see the joint space again. That's only three months later. That was after three injections of platelet-rich plasma and one injection of allograft mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, now, he paid out of pocket for that. It was $6,500. Keep in mind, this was a couple years ago as well, uh, back in 2016 and 17. Some of these products are actually now covered by insurance. So that's one of the things we'll go over on your phone consultation when you come into the office. We'll see if you have benefits uh, for some of the amniotic fluid products that have been FDA uh, cleared and assigned billable codes. And also the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma that we use, which is a preparation from your own blood. If you've ever cut yourself before, you know, I recently cut my finger. That's why I have this thing on my, on my finger here. I cut my finger pretty bad yesterday, actually. Uh, and after the red blood stops flowing, you'll notice the clear or yellow type substance comes out. And that forms a scab. And a couple days later, it falls off and you have new skin. So that clear yellow fluid that comes out, that's your plasma. Your blood plasma carries all the healing properties of your body through your bloodstream, your platelets, your growth factors. Uh, even your adult stem cells will come through uh, your plasma. We can separate that from your blood by drawing just 10 mLs of blood, like if you're going to get your annual blood work done at your primary care doctor. Um, we centrifuge that for a short period of time, and we capture and concentrate all those healing growth factors. And we can inject it into the area of your injury. In osteoarthritis, the knee and shoulder specifically, we're trying to regenerate the meniscal cartilage, that soft cartilage between the joints. PRP works very well at causing collagen and elastin to form to rebuild that soft cartilage. So if you've worn through your soft cartilage and you're not growing it fast enough on your own, PRP can be used. And we manufacture our own line of FDA cleared PRP kits, and we did this to reduce the cost. Because when I first started using PRP in our original facility eight years ago, it was very expensive. These kits were hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It cost about $1,000 to do a PRP injection for a patient. And uh, for those of you that were on Social Security or a pension and a fixed income, that's a lot of money. You know, my grandma lived on a $1,200 a month Social Security check for a long time. Uh, it was almost that whole check to go get PRP done, right? Uh, so we actually manufactured a less costly, more effective solution, only a couple hundred bucks to get PRP now uh, if it's not covered by your insurance. So your next step uh, would be to contact Kentuckiana Medicine um, and to get your risk-free consultation uh, over the phone. Uh, now, I want to go over a couple of quick uh, frequently asked questions, and I see some of you have raised your hands here and have questions as well. Um, Tina and Bob, the organizers, will unmute the phone in just a minute or two here so you can ask those questions, and then I'll also check in the chat box uh, for any of you that have written your questions down. Um, we'll see if we have any there. I don't see any yet, but if you want to start typing in any additional questions that haven't yet been answered, uh, we'll take those in just a minute. So first and foremost, um, if you want to come in and see if you're a candidate after your phone consultation, there's no charge for that. Uh, and we can help you with problems in one or both knees. If you've had injections in the past of these hyaluronic products, these rooster comb injections, um, your insurance will typically cover that in six months, or if you have Aetna, in three months. Um, so if you've had them recently, we may still be able to help even if those have not worked. <clears throat> If you've already got x-rays or MRIs, you can bring them with you. Or if you want to email them to the office before you come in, they can be reviewed during your phone consultation. Um, various different insurances, not just Medicare, Humana, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, Cigna, TRICARE if you're a retired uh, veteran or family member of a veteran. Uh, these all cover uh, visco supplementation, the bracing and the therapy that we've discussed here today. But we can verify your benefits specifically so that you'll know if you have any copay or deductible before you come in uh, to the facility in Jeffersonville, Indiana there. Now, you can reach them at the number on screen, which is 812-282-1575. Uh, and we can check your insurance benefits even before you come in. Usually it takes a day or two for us to do that, so please give it uh, your insurance number to the uh, office over the phone during your risk-free consultation. Um, also, if you've got any other procedures scheduled to be done, or if you're currently working, there's no restrictions on activity from these injections. The very same day, you can go back to walking in normal activity. They don't hurt. We use two types of anesthesia, a cooling spray so you don't feel the pinch of the needle, 
and lidocaine to numb it up uh, before the main injection. I've had these injections done dozens of times. Originally, almost two decades ago, I had a second round done in 2013. Uh, I can tell you from firsthand experience, they really don't hurt. Um, in fact, you psych yourself out more and, and, and the, the, the fear of it happening is actually more painful than it actually happening. Uh, if you close your eyes, usually the procedure is done, you don't even notice it. Um, so very painless, hurts less than a flu shot. Uh, so you don't have to worry about if you have anything else going on, you can still do it. The only thing we ask is that you don't do heavy exercise the day of the injection, no running, no lifting heavy weights at the gym, uh, you know, walking, even jogging, riding a bicycle, those are all fine. Um, again, with United Healthcare and other payers, they will cover. And then for those of you that don't have insurance or that do have some coinsurance or copay, maybe you have Medicare, no secondary, so you have that 20% that you have to worry about. Uh, we do offer patient financing. I also want you to know that 20%, if you do have Medicare with no secondary, it's hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars. This is not an expensive treatment. Um, so even if you have some out of pocket, uh, it's not going to be that bad. So I've covered about everything I can. You call in and, and do your risk-free consultation. Uh, I want to make sure we answer any questions anyone might have. So we're going to open it up for questions and answers. I'll answer the typed one here while Tina and Bob unmute the line for anybody who wants to ask questions uh, by phone. So good question here from Elaine. Once this series of injections are completed, will it be the last time the series need to be done? Uh, the answer to that is it depends on the severity of your osteoarthritis. If you're walking right now on your own power, maybe you have to use a cane, but you're not yet in a wheelchair or a walker, you're probably not bone on bone. You probably have a more mild or moderate case. Usually one round of injections will do the trick. Uh, we did a randomized clinical research trial of 384 patients in 2015. Uh, out of that group, 356 of them, that's 92.7%, had a 50% or greater reduction of pain improvement of function in the first round. And 32% of them had zero pain after a single round of injections, and they were able to go back to anything they wanted. They could golf, they could tennis, they could walk, they could run. Um, so about a third of the patients had zero pain. Uh, another 50% had a significant reduction of pain. So it depends on your knees. Uh, and we'll be able to discover that during your consultation and if we take your x-rays and to specifically answer if you'll probably only need one round. Now on the flip side of that, the worst cases we've ever seen have required three rounds. Um, that x-ray I showed you earlier with the bone-on-bone -bone patient, that was two rounds of injections only. So really bad cases. It's not like you have to get this done every six months for the rest of your life. Uh, the worst cases we've ever seen, and we've seen tens of thousands, if not more, of these cases uh, over the past decade throughout the nation and in the, in the facilities we've certified uh, has been three times. Uh, but that's an absolute worst case scenario. Most people fully resolve in a single round of injections. Some require a second uh, six months later. And then on average, people are usually about two to three years with no pain and full function uh, before any of the symptoms come back. And I'll tell you the same thing my doctor told me, which is why I had to have my injections repeated in 2013. Uh, he said, don't wait for it to get as bad as it was before. If you start to have some symptoms coming back, go ahead and have it done again, uh, because pain is your body's way of telling you there's damage, there's uh, destruction taking place. So you don't want to ignore it. You want to do something about it. Pain's not normal. You shouldn't be in pain every day. Um, so that's the same advice I'll pass along to you here today. As in a couple of years, if you have some of the symptoms starting to return, go ahead and repeat the procedure. Your insurance will cover it uh, a second time. Don't let it get as bad uh, as it used to be. Uh, Vicki asks, is it the same procedure for the shoulder as the knee? Uh, and the answer is yes, except it's faster. Um, so with the shoulder, uh, it's less weight bearing. It's only bearing the weight of our arm and motion, right? And it's a smaller joint. Your knee is full of about 110 mLs of fluid. Your shoulder is about 50, so it's less than half the size. Typically, only three injections into the shoulder are required uh, for people to get full pain relief. Very rarely does the shoulder need to be repeated. Um, so the shoulder is actually a little bit easier to treat than the knee. Um, another question here was, could an injection be used in the foot? where one has arthritis? Um, I'll answer the question two ways. So the medication, uh, visco supplementation, is FDA approved for use in the knee and shoulder only. But in Canada, Europe, every other major developed country around the world, it's approved for use in every joint, fingers, toes, elbows, wrists, ankles, even in the spine. 
Uh, and doctors are allowed to use a medication that's called off-label. If it's FDA approved for one use, a doctor can choose to use it for another. If you've been following the coronavirus task force recently, you know, first they had hydroxychloroquine, now they've got that uh, remdesivir or whatever it is. Those are FDA approved for different uses, but they're using it to treat COVID-19 even though it's not approved for that yet. Mm -hmm. So these medications are the same way. The doctor can look at your ankle, look at your foot, and they can choose to use it off-label. It may not be covered by your insurance if it's used in an off-label application, but the medication itself is not that expensive. Um, so if you have to pay for the medication out of pocket, um, we would probably use Suparts or Hyalgin if you're paying for it out of pocket because that's less costly. It's about $92 for that medication versus the Genbisc 850 uh, is about $420. So if your insurance is covering it, we're going to use that one. If you don't have insurance coverage, we'll probably use one of the older uh, lesser costly medications for the foot or ankle. Hope that answers your question. And uh, I hear that the mute was just taken off. So if anybody wants to ask questions uh, verbally, uh, please feel free. Oh, and I see Vicki asked another question here. You have knee and a shoulder issue. Yes, both can be treated. And uh, the office is certified to do knee and shoulder injections. They can even be done uh, on the same visit. Uh, we can do a knee and a shoulder at the same time, although typically you do each side on a separate visit. So if you got a left and right knee, left and right shoulder, you'd come twice a week, one for the left side, one for the right side. Okay, that's what I wanted uh, to know. That's because you want to rest the side that just had the injection done. So you have to, yeah, you have to use the other side while you're, while you're waiting to recover. So you'll just come twice a week instead of once if it's both sides. Uh, but if you have knee and shoulder, it can be done same day. Any other questions? Nope, oh, maybe. Thanks, Becky. Anybody else? Lance, free. Yes. Lance can you check on your chat uh, privately? There is a, um, there are other questions that were answered in the Q&A. Um, if you look at the answered um, column or tab, um, uh -huh. you may want to go through that as well because that's not visible to everyone. Oh, okay, I'll do that as well then. Um, so one person asked, how long are you off work? And the answer is you're not off work at all. You can return to normal function right after these injections. We ice it for 10 minutes after the injection to reduce any local discomfort or pain. Uh, and you walk out of the office under your own power and can turn to all your normal activities right away. Um, they're done in office, not in a surgical facility. It is done in a sterile setting. So when you come into the facility, uh, the room, the procedure chair, they are sterilized between patients. The physicians are going to be wearing gloves and PPE, and we're going to use uh, an antimicrobial, antiviral uh, cleanser on the area of the injection prior to the procedure being performed. Um, to get pre-approved with your insurance, if your insurance requires prior authorization, usually takes about one to three days. It's a little hit and miss right now because some of the insurance companies are telecommuting, so you've got people all working from home and and uh, sometimes it can take three or four days now to get a pre-approval, where usually it's the same day, next day, uh, but definitely within a week. Uh, we are currently performing procedures during COVID-19, but we're scheduling patients a lot differently. So we're only scheduling one patient in the office at a time uh, so that you can maintain social distancing. You're not going to be in a waiting room with other people. And although we've always sterilized the procedure rooms before and after each treatment and the exam rooms before and after each patient, uh, we're using additional special cleansers uh, and techniques to ensure no viral transmission uh, between patients. So we are open. We are doing them. Uh, and you can come in for an evaluation uh, potentially as early as today or tomorrow. Uh, you definitely can make an appointment today. If you want to call to make the appointment, um, please call the 812-220-0285 number. Uh, you can also uh, go online. Uh, to regenmedky.com uh, or call their other phone number, which is 812-282-1575. Um, let's see, where are some of the other ones? Uh, Anthem, uh, which is a, a division of Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, we do accept the benefits for that. Uh, we will do a complimentary verification of benefits when you call in. Uh, we can do two knees at the same time if you're traveling a long distance or if you're coming from an inpatient nursing facility or something of that nature. Um, but if you're not, it's a good idea to do them on separate dates, and that's actually what Medicare recommends because we numb the knee uh, for you to have the procedure done, 
And if we numb both knees, it lasts for about four hours, um, you run the risk of falling afterwards. So they recommend doing just one knee per day. Um, so if you have left and right knee osteoarthritis, you'll just come twice a week. And I do want to let you know the visits are really quick. Um, like 10, 15 minutes you're in the office. The procedure itself is only about 90 seconds. Um, so it's very fast. Uh, so even if you have to come more than once, they're very quick visits. Um, you can go in the pool or take a bath or take a shower after the injection, but do keep in mind it was an injection, so we are breaking the skin. Um, and as a result of that, you know, make sure the pool's in good condition, right? If you've balanced your chemicals and it's nice uh, and, and, and clean, go for it. Don't go swimming in like a lake or an ocean or anywhere that you can get bacteria in, especially right after the injection. You want to wait a couple hours. Um, let that uh, injection site heal first. That would be recommended. Um, let the doctor know if you're going to go in the pool right after the injection. We have special bandages we can put over the injection site. They're actually waterproof. Um, so if you do plan on going hop in the water right after the procedure, uh, please let Dr. Cruz and his team know when you're in the office. They'll use the right kind of bandage for you. Uh, once the series is completed, usually the results last for years. Uh, it depends on the severity of your condition. Uh, I think I answered the rest of these. How much physical therapy do you get? I see a question here. It depends on how bad you are. Um, so, and, and what you're having trouble with. So, so oftentimes people have a hard time with stairs, going up and down stairs. So we might really focus on stair steps and those type of activities. The purpose of this physical therapy is not to get you strong and buff. It's to get you back to the activities that you couldn't do before and to get you doing it without modification. What that means is if, if you're like hanging on to the railing when you're going up and down the stairs, that's not normal. It actually puts you at greater risk of injury because you're favoring one side of your body versus the other. So we try to work on getting you back to even where you don't have to favor one side or the other, and that reduces the risk of you having further injuries or the osteoarthritis coming back or getting worse. So that's the type of physical therapy we do. It's not strenuous. You're not to come in and be soaked in sweat. Uh, you know, it's, it's more functional than, you know, muscle building. Um, so this is going to be a different type of therapy than you've experienced previously, most likely. Um, and that's something that can be reviewed with you when you go into the office for your consultation. Uh, we do the therapy in the office. There's a physical therapist on site, licensed physical therapist on site. And there's also a home rehab device we have uh, called the NEMD that will allow you to do flexion extension exercises of your knee at home. Uh, to help you strengthen those ligaments. So I think that answers the backlog of questions that we have there. Um, would anybody like to ask any questions by audio uh, over the phone or using the mic and speakers on their computer? Christina? Hello? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, this is Christina. I live near Fort Knox, Kentucky. Is your physical therapy only in Jeffersonville? Uh, great question, Christina. Um, I've always wanted to visit Fort Knox. That's a really cool place. Uh, and that tank base right around there too. Uh, and never been. Uh, we have a home rehab device. So what we would likely do in your case is when you came into the office for the injections, you would do physical therapy the same day. So you would come do your physical therapy exercise, have your injection, and go home not have to travel to the office another day for physical therapy, uh, but we would probably prescribe the NEMD home rehab device so that you could do the flexion extension exercises at home without having to drive back into the office for extra therapy. And we can always work with a local physical therapist near you in Fort Knox if there are any advanced therapies that need to be done on a more regular basis than once or twice a week when you come in for your injections. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. I do have a second question. Is everyone, fitted, is everyone fitted with the knee brace or how is that determined? Great question. Uh, and like many of my answers, it kind of depends on the severity of your case. If you've got that mild osteoarthritis where there's just a little bit of joint space loss, and you're starting to have some symptoms, uh, but it's not that bad, you may not need the brace. But if you're bone on bone, if you're having to use a cane or a walker, you're probably going to need that brace. Now, I know a lot of people get scared about the brace or worried about the brace. This is not like those big braces you see on television 
uh, with the athletes and things they're playing football and so forth that look like uh, you know they're they're part robotic. Uh, it's a much smaller, lighter, low-profile brace. It can be worn under your clothes. When I had to wear my brace, um, it fit under jeans, it fit under slacks. People couldn't even tell I was wearing it. And it was so comfortable after 20, 30 minutes, I kind of forgot it was there. Um, you don't have to wear it all day, every day. You do want to wear it for a couple of hours after your injection to allow that medication to get into the compartment of the knee that's most um, degenerated and be more effective. Um, but you do want to wear the brace with any activities that make it worse. So if you're gardening, walking the dog, walking the mall, um, you know, I've had a lot of people say, can I golf while I'm going through these injections? Yeah, you can. But if that makes your knees hurt, put the brace on before you do the activity that makes your knees hurt. Pain is your body's way of signaling that there's damage taking place. We're trying to rebuild the joint. We don't want you damaging it further during the treatment. So you may or may not need the brace. If you have the brace, wear it during activities that usually hurt. Wear it right after the injection. Um, other than that, the more you can wear it, the better. If any of you had braces, you remember if you didn't wear your retainer afterwards, they got out of alignment, right? The more you wore your retainer, the straighter your teeth stayed. It's the same thing with the knee brace. We're trying to correct the misalignment of that joint and get it back into proper alignment. The more you wear it, the faster that happens. Uh, typically, you do not have to wear the brace for more than a couple of months, even in the most severe cases. Any other questions? I have a question. Can you hear me? Just fine. Go ahead. Okay. This is Cheryl. Can you hear me, Cheryl? Yes, Cheryl. Thank you. Okay, good. Because I've tried to get. Okay, so I've had a revision on my right knee. Mm -hmm. um, so that's two within a five-year period. Um, and I still have what I. This is the only way I can describe it. My kneecap doesn't float like it's supposed to. So I have, mm -hmm. and you know, I sit at a desk most of the majority of the day. And you know, I used to dance. Can't do that anymore either. Any activity, um, it hurts, um, and it takes several days. Prednisone, I love it because I can be active. I know it's not good. Uh, pain pills don't do any good. Um, so that is the first question about that. Um, I'd like to have that movement back again where I can move that around. Um, I just recently went to the surgeon there in Louisville, and he said that the surgery went well, uh, but I still am having problems. Now, the left knee on the inside at the bottom is starting to deteriorate, so I think that would be a great candidate for that. But I would love to get the right knee working back well is also because it's also it's shifted my hip and of course there's I don't have that um, muscle mass in the right leg because of that so what are your thoughts on those two um so I'll start first with your symptomology with the kneecap with the patella uh, that's called patellofemoral arthritis that may still benefit from the fluid injections um, and then for the pain side of things we would look at alternatives like um, what are called genicular blocks, where we might anesthetize the nerves um, so that the okay. nerves are transmitting the pain signal. And that typically lasts for about six months at a time. You might have to have that repeated more than once, but it will keep you from having to use anti-inflammatories and pain medications every day. Um, I, am an RA, I am an RA patient and an osteal patient. I'm taking Humira. Okay. That won't impact the ability to do the nerve blocks. Um, they're okay. just local injections or mm -hmm. application of local heat and radio frequencies. So that can be done. We're lucky that um, you've got Dr. Cruz to go through there. He's trained and certified in a lot of advanced pain management procedures. Not all the clinics we work with around the country are. So they can go over some of those unique options with you. Uh, on the Good. side of the muscle mass and tissue, we can obviously look at therapy. Maybe the home rehab device could be a helpful tool for you. The knee and knee has to be used for about 10 minutes a day. Um, it reminds me of the old TV commercials with Chuck Norris and Christy Brinkley with the home <laughs> exercise they used to put under the bed, the Bowflex or whatever, you know, in 15 minutes a day. But this really is only 10, 15 minutes a day. It actually works. Um, so that might be helpful for you. And then there are some regenerative medicine tools uh, that I'll let Dr. Cruz discuss with you during your consultation, such as exosomes. Exosomes are an excretion from mesenchymal stem cells, and they're very anti-inflammatory. Um, and they last for months in most instances. 
that might be an alternative to some of the pain blocks and other procedures that could be used for you as well. And unlike stem cells, uh, exosomes are much less costly. Um, so that's something else they can review with you during the consultation. You've got a much more complex situation than the average patient we work with, being that you've already been through the, the revision surgery and so forth. Um, yes. With you when mm -hmm. you the doctor, um, and mm -hmm. they'll go over all of the uh, potential options uh, with you. Uh, another okay. question here uh, from Michelle is, um, you've got a different size thigh. Uh, regular braces don't fit. Will ours, and yes, these braces are custom fit. Um, so the straps are adjusted. It's bended and mold to fit each patient. If someone has um, a really bad deformity of the knee, if it's a knock kneed or bow legged more than 30 degrees, or if someone's got a very large or a very small thigh or calf, uh, we actually have a custom brace program where we put this decal on your kneecap, take a picture with an iPhone, upload it uh, to the manufacturer of the bracing, and they build a brace specific to your knee. Um, so even if you've got a really significant deformity or you're very large or very small or very abnormal body shape, uh, we can still fit you with a brace that would be appropriate, unlike the ones you would buy at the pharmacy or at Dick's Sporting Goods. That's kind of like a one-size-fits-most. Um, so we can take care of that for you. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay, my name is Joanne. And I have had Synfisk injections. I've had the uh, Rusticone injections. I've had cortisone. Um, oh, and, and the plasma-rich platelets. Mm -hmm. They seem to work for a while, but then it wears off. And wears off pretty quickly. Uh, how is your... Uh, your medicine different from the Synvis because that's like a dub, I call it WD-40 for the knees. I like that. I might keep that one for a while and use it. <laughs> uh, Synvis is different than all the other medications. It has an active ingredient called hyalin, H-Y-A-L-A-N. Uh, it's actually yes. chemically manufactured where all mm -hmm. the other medications in the category are naturally produced, whether they're whether they're a bacterial culture like the Genvisc 850 that we work with. Um, Synvisc is also a heavier weight. It's thicker. It's more dense. Um, so mm -hmm. it doesn't always bond with the existing synovial fluid as well if your synovial fluid is very thin. So if your disease is a little more progressed, it might be a little less effective. Also, that guidance consideration comes into play. When you had mm -hmm. those in previously, were you able to see it? your knee when it was being done? Was there a screen there and the doctor was using a device to see inside or were they just kind of feeling around? <laughs> they were just adjust? feeling around. They did just it feeling around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the problem with blind injections, and when you said it worked for a little while but not a long while, kind of gave me a little hint. Um, you probably did not get the full dose inside the synovial capsule because if you get the full dose inside the capsule, it will stimulate those glands, those synovocytes, to produce more hyaluronic acid on their own. But if yes. you don't get the full dose inside, it is just like changing the oil or adding the WD-40. It works for a short period, and then it stops. So part of the, um, the trick uh, to how we're getting better results here is by using the video x-ray, we're ensuring every single one of those injections gets inside that capsule. And then the second part of it is doing the exercise and the weight-bearing activity that helps stimulate those glands too, and you got to do it at the same time. It's why we do the therapy and the injections on the same day. It works together to make mm -hmm. the nova sites function faster and properly uh, on their own again. So even though the last two times you've had this done, the results haven't worked long term, you may get better long term results when you come see us. Now the okay. PRP that you had done, that's for a whole separate situation that doesn't do anything for the fluid or for the synovocytes. That works on the meniscal cartilage, the soft cartilage. And then if you've got loss of hard cartilage, the hyaline cartilage, that's where we look at mesenchymal stem cells and things of that nature. So although platelet-rich plasma is a good thing, it has to be used in the right way at the right time. And I've even seen, I'm talking to you from Florida, I'm in Tampa, Florida, and um, we have a group here called Florida Orthopedic. And um, in, in our clinic locally here, 
we had a lot of patients come in after they had stem cell procedure done where they had the bone marrow taken out and they paid yes. $10,000 a knee to have these injections done. And these folks would come to us still in pain, sometimes in worse pain, and we would take their x-rays and they would have giant bone spurs, huge osteophytes, right? Yeah. The thing with all these regenerative techniques is it's living tissue that you're using as a treatment. So how stem cells work, before they do anything else, they do what's called homing. They're attracted to inflammation and what's called apoptosis, cell death, uh, because that's what stem cells do. Their job is to replace cells that have died. When your skin dies and falls off, stem cells form new skin cells. When your hair falls out, stem cells create new hair follicles. And as we age, we have less stem cells. That's why our hair is thinner. You know, you can see me on camera here. This is my hair. <laughs> when I was in high yes. school, this was my hairline. It's not where it used to be because I have less stem cells now than I used to, right? Um, so yes. these, people, these stem cells done, if they were bone on bone, when they were breaking down hard cartilage, those stem cells would create bone, not cartilage, because that's the tissue that was being right fastest. So when we use PRP, when we use mesenchymal stem cells, we don't just have to use the right product, we have to use it at the right time, and we have to use it in the right environment. Ideally, you should be doing the injections of hyaluronic acid and bracing first, building the joint space back up, stopping the destruction of bone, and then looking at using PRP or stem cell, because if you put it in too early, it might stimulate the wrong type of cell growth. That's one of the big problems with regenerative medicine. That's why if you're going to shell out the money to do something like that, it's not covered by your insurance. It's uh -huh. important to a very experienced physician who knows how to do it the right way. Uh, and Dr. Cruz is uh, board certified in more than one area of medicine uh, and, and has gone to many um, certification courses for regenerative medicine. He's very good at it. Uh, and if nothing else, he can tell you the honest truth on whether or not you might be a candidate. But that's the biggest, I'd say the biggest problem with regenerative medicine is using it too soon. It's not really supposed to be a first line defense. It's got to oh. be used at the right time. Um, so uh -huh. that might be PRP was less effective for you than it is for most. And maybe that's not even the right tool. Maybe you don't have a meniscal cartilage issue. Maybe you have a hyaline cartilage issue. So that's part of what we'll look at when you come into the facility and meet with Dr. Cruz and his team. Okay. I definitely want to make an appointment then or have a consult. Please, yeah. Uh, and then the question about Anthem. So Anthem does cover hyaluronic acid injections. They just have what's called a drug formulary restriction. So a lot of these insurance companies, if your doctor says, I want to use this medication, the insurance company says, we don't cover that medication. You have to use this medication first. And um, to cut through all the noise and give you the real reason why, um, Anthem is owned, owns Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? They own certain pharmacies. For example, CVS, they own over a third of it. So like here in Florida, if I got Blue Cross Blue Shield, I can't fill my prescription I'm sorry, they own Walgreens, not CVS. I can't fill my prescription at CVS. I have to fill it at Walgreens. Why? Because Blue Cross Blue Shield's paying themselves, basically, because they own part of the pharmacy. So we have to jump through those type of administrative hurdles, sometimes with private insurance. Your health plan might say we have to try OrthoVisc or Uflexa before we can use GenVisc. Or they might say that you've got to fill cortisone before you can do it. Or they might say that you have to try the physical therapy first and only if the physical therapy doesn't work will they cover the injection. So they will cover the injection, but you've got to jump through these different hoops first before they'll cover the injection. And that's part of what we'll do during your insurance verification when you call over the phone. Give your health plan information to Dr. Cruz's staff, to Karen or whoever you speak with there, and we'll verify the benefits first, call you back and say, this is what your insurance plan says you have to do. And on the side, if any of you are 65 and older and you don't have Medicare, you bought a private insurance instead, you got Humana Gold or uh, the AERP plan by United or whatever the case might be, highly encourage you during open enrollment next year to go back in Medicare. Um, there's no better insurance in our country than Medicare with a secondary. Get Medicare, get a secondary uh, to cover that additional 20%. There's a reason the Humana and United and so forth replacement plans are cheaper than the premium than Medicare. And it's for reasons like this. They take coverage away from you. Um, so if you've got health problems and you go to the doctor regularly, 
you know, I highly encourage you to stick to the stick to the federal Medicare, that red, white, and blue card. Uh, once I'm old enough for it, I'll I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, it still exists by the time I'm um, retirement age. It's really good insurance. Uh, these replacement plans are not as good because they put these catches on your coverage, like like Anthem, with all the different stuff we have to try and fail first. So, give that Anthem policy number to the staff when you call in. We'll find out what the hoops are. Uh, we'll explain them to you and let you know what we have to do first to get the injections covered and what other options might be available to you. Also, if your insurance uh, is not the best. Uh, and it doesn't have good coverage, or you got a big deductible, a multi-thousand dollar deductible you haven't hit yet, there are some other things we can look at that might be less expensive and more effective than this. We could look at maybe doing the PRP. We could look at doing a, a lesser expensive hyaluronic acid product if you have to pay for it out of pocket uh, than the Genvesc 850, and then maybe combining that with some of the regenerative medicine techniques. So be honest with the doctor and his staff when you call in. If you've got a bad insurance plan with a big deductible, tell them and let them know that cost is a concern and you're looking for the least expensive way to get your function back and your quality of life back. And they'll be sensitive to that and they'll look at the right type of solutions that also fit your budget. This is not a one size fits all thing. It's not like you have to have this particular medication or it won't work. A lot of the things we do with the guidance make all the injectable products more effective than they would be on their own. The combination with the bracing makes them more effective than they'd be on your own. So even if you have a, a drug formulary restriction on your health plan, we can work around that and still help you as best as possible. So um, please give that information to the staff when you call in. Any other questions or concerns before we adjourn for the day? Uh, anybody, if you've got a mic uh, and speakers, just uh, say it out loud. If you're on the phone, say it out loud. If uh, you don't have that, please type it into the chat box here, uh, and I'll answer it for you. I uh, just want to wait about another minute uh, if anybody else has any other uh, questions uh, before we adjourn for the day. And thanks, everybody, for taking the time to be with us here today and listen to my story and consider this alternative treatment option. Hope it works for you the same way it worked for me uh, and so many others. Um, so any other questions before we adjourn? Yes, uh, I do have one. Is the 812-282-1575 for appointments only, or is that also for the, the consultation phone number? Uh, that's the doctor's office, so they'll be calling them directly. And when you schedule a consultation, they'll, they'll give you a ring back. So you can call into that main line. You'll probably speak with Karen or one of the other staff members, and, and they'll help you out. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else before we go? Well, thanks everybody for taking the time out of your day to meet with us here today. Uh, really appreciate it. I hope you learned something new. I hope that this option uh, is gonna work better than what you've tried in the past, like it did for me. Um, and it's been my pleasure to share this with you and to share my experience with you. And I genuinely wish you all uh, health and happiness and hope that you can get back to pain-free mobility uh, just like I was able to uh, through this wonderful medication and approach, uh, the Advanced Arthritis Brief Protocol, and you're going to be in very capable and trustworthy hands with Dr. Cruz there um, in Jeffersonville. Uh, he's, he's a great guy on a personal level. I've known him for many months now uh, as he's gone through our training and certification protocol. Um, I'm very confident you're going to get the best quality of care possible at their facility, Kentucky, and integrative medicine there. So thanks again, everybody, for your time. Uh, best of luck with your treatment and hope that you can all get back to normal pain-free function as soon as possible. Have a great day.